Hi, Math Ed students. Today, we're going to continue with Pythagorean's Theorem. Pythagorean's Theorem states that if the lengths of the legs of a right triangle are A and B, and the length of the hypotenuse is C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, we've seen that the past couple of days by using the side lengths of a right triangle, or any triangle, to determine if it actually is a right triangle. Here, we're going to be using it to find one of the missing sides of that right triangle, specifically the hypotenuse. So we can use Pythagorean's theorem to determine the length of the hypotenuse of each right triangle to the nearest tenth of a unit if necessary. So we know this first example is a right triangle because of the right angle marking in the corner. So this is obviously a right triangle. And we have the side lengths for the legs as 6 and 8. And we need to find C, which is the hypotenuse. So we start by recording our formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That is Pythagorean's theorem. We substitute in 6 for the first leg and 8 for the second leg, and we're leaving C because that's the one we need to find. We know 6 squared is 36. We know 8 squared is 64. We're leaving C squared. Add the 36 and the 64. We get 100 leaving c squared, and our last step is to get rid of the square. Now, 100 is a perfect square, and we know there are actually two answers, 10 and negative 10, but because we're talking about a length here, we only need the principal square root. So our answer is c equals 10. Let's try another. Okay, so for number two, we go through that same process. Again, we have the legs lengths of 4 and 12, and we're looking for the hypotenuse length of C. So again, we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A being 4, B being 12, leaving C squared. We know 4 squared is 16, and 12 squared is 144. Adding those two together, we get 160 equals C squared. Then, to get C by itself, we do the square root, and this does not result in a perfect square. So we don't know what number 10 itself equals 160 because 160 is not a perfect square. So we're going to take our calculator, do 160 square root, and we get 12.649. Now, in the directions, it said to round to the nearest tenth, so we're going to leave this as 12.6 because the 4 after the 6 doesn't require us to round up. So we can say that C is approximately 12.6 units. That symbol there, instead of the straight across lines for equals, means approximately. All right, let's try another. Okay, same deal here. We know the lengths of the legs are 10 and 24, and we want to find the hypotenuse. So we're going to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared which is 10 squared plus 24 squared equals C squared. We know 10 squared is 100. I know 24 squared is 576 equals C squared. Then 100 plus 576 is 676 equals C squared. Get rid of the square by taking the square root and C. Now, I'm not sure if this is a perfect square or not, so I'm going to use my calculator and do 676 square root, and it is 26. So it is a perfect square. So we can put C equals 26. Done. That's why the direction said to only round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Let's try another. Number four. Okay, so here we have legs of five and nine, and again, a missing hypotenuse. So again, we start by recording our formula, then plugging in the legs, smallest first. We know 5 squared is 25. We know 9 squared is 81. Add those together, 5 and 1 is 6, and 2 and 8 is 10. So it's 106 equals C squared. I don't know of that being a perfect square, so I'm going to use my calculator. Clear, we get 106 square root is 10.29. Now remember we're rounding to the tenths, 
So the two is currently in the tenths place and the nine follows. So we're going to round that to 10.3. So we have that C is approximately 10.3 units. All right. So this stuff is pretty easy. I'm sure you can try it on your own. So you're going to do numbers five through eight. Good luck.